welcome back to Johnny Builds where this week I built this outdoor rocking chair to go along with the outdoor sofa that I built recently. Now this is a beginner level DIY project using easy to get materials and common tools that a lot of folks already have. Stick around to the end of the video to see how you can support this channel and you can score some Johnny Build swag. Okay, let's get started. All of the materials used in this project is construction grade lumber. Just make sure to pick through the stacks and find the best boards. Now this step is totally optional if you don't have one, but I like to run all my boards through my planer to get rid of a little bit of that rounded edge. It also leaves a smoother surface which will save time sanding later. Now the rockers for this chair are made out of this 2x12. I measured out 48 inches, marked a line, and then cut this board over on my miter saw. Next up are the armrests, which are 33 inches long. I cut down two of these from a 2x8 board. The two lower armrest supports are both 31 inches, and again, I cut these from a 2x8. Then using the remaining 2x8 offcuts, we're going to cut four of these 12 and a half inch armrest supports. Moving on to the 2x4s, I cut three lower cross supports at 37 inches. Now I'm gonna work on the design of the rockers. I first marked a line three inches in from the front. I marked two inches down on the back of the rocker and drew a diagonal line connecting these. It was important to have a good smooth radius so the rocker actually rocks. So I used this flexible offcut and a couple screws to brace it against. Then when I found the radius that I liked, I drove in a third screw to hold it in place. I traced the curve that this created and then to finish the rocker, I drew the front curve by hand. And the easiest way to cut this out was using my jigsaw and then I could just come back later with my sander and make sure everything along the radius was smoothed out. And now with my sander and 120 grit sanding disc, I could clean up the first rocker and then transfer the radius onto the board for the second rocker. Again, just using my jigsaw to cut it out. And then I clamped the two rockers together and sanded the radius flush. Then I could come back with my circular saw and cut that diagonal line. Now, once you get one cut, you're gonna transfer this mark over to the second rocker and cut it as well. Once I had most of the boards cut, I could start drilling in pocket holes. And as we move through the next couple of steps, you'll see exactly how these pocket holes are oriented. Prior to assembly, I used my orbital sander to sand up all these boards to 120 grit. To begin assembly, I used one of the 37 inch 2x4 cross braces and I attached this to the front of the rocker with a little bit of glue and two pocket screws. After driving in the first one, I used my speed square to square everything back up and then I could drive in the second pocket screw. And once the first side was attached, I flipped it over and attached the second side the same way. Next I attached the rear 2x4 stretcher, but first I used this 2x8 side support to line up that back stretcher before attaching. Then I could go ahead and attach those two side supports, and here you see the layout of the pocket holes. There's three on each end and five down the length. Next up I could add that final 2x4 stretcher which sits at the lowest part of the radius about an inch up. I made sure it was square and then drove in the four pocket screws. And last up on the base is this 31 inch center support that I cut off camera. I lined it up in the center, made sure it was square, and then drove in those final pocket screws. Now I could put together the armrests, which are attached with a little bit of glue and three pocket screws on each upright. All the pocket holes face the back of the chair so they're not visible when the chair is fully assembled. And of course, for quality control purposes, I had to make sure it rocked well and was sturdy at this point. Moving on to attaching the armrest to the rocker, I cut this spacer block because the armrest had a tendency to want to pull in, and then I could attach it with pocket screws. I removed the 2x4 spacer and then measured this as the back stretcher, which I then cut down on the miter saw. That's 25 and a half inches for those of you that are keeping track. I drilled in some pocket screws to the end of this stretcher and then used a couple squeeze clamps to hold it in place while I attached it. Next, I measured and cut the four seat slats, which ended up being a quarter inch shy of 40 inches. This accounts for the material I removed in the beginning with my planer. I spaced the seat slats out about a half inch to account for any wood movement, and then I attached them with brad nails. I set the bevel on my miter saw to 15 degrees and then cut one end of a two x four cut off at this angle. I marked out a line where this met with the back stretcher and then cut this at 15 degrees off camera. 
I attach these boards with a couple brad nails on the bottom and then use the 3 8 drill bit from my Craig jig and a dowel to attach the top. Using the remaining 1x8s, I marked out 25 and a half inches and then cut two boards for the backrest for the chair. Again, I'm just using brad nails to attach them. There are several different ways to plug up pocket holes, but my favorite is just using 3 8 inch dowels, hammering them in place, and then cutting them flush with a flush trim saw. And then a quick sanding to get them smooth. I actually debated leaving this one the natural wood. That's certainly an option if you want to do that. but. I couldn't help myself. I ended up going with Shosugiban. I burned the wood. The torch that I use is a torch that's commonly used to burn weeds, and there's a link to that down in the description below. I cleaned up the chair with a Scotch-Brite pad before adding the finish, and I made a last-minute decision to go with the turquoise stain like I used in my kitchen island. Now, I actually did a whole tutorial on how to do stained Shosugiban, so make sure you check that out. There's a link up there in the corner. And since this will be outdoors, I finished it with three coats of a satin spar urethane, and this rocker was done. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I really love the way this chair came out, how well it rocks, and just how comfortable it is. Now, I got a little crazy and went kind of bold with the color choice. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you like the color or should I left it natural or just the burn? If you like this build, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with all the things I've got coming up. Also, follow me on Instagram at Johnny Build. Okay guys, if you're still watching this video, then obviously you're a diehard Johnny Builds fan and I wanna tell you how you can support this channel without costing you anything extra than you would already spend. And all you have to do is change the Amazon bookmark in your web browser to my Amazon affiliate link. Now I've got my link down in the description below and instructions instructions on how to do this, but if you change that, what it'll do is every time you make an Amazon purchase, it will kick me a little bit of commission change and help keep the lights on here at Johnny Builds and help me make more videos. So if you do that, take a screenshot of it, send me an email along with your address, and I'll send you some Johnny Builds stickers as a way to say thank you. Again, instructions on how to do that are down in the description below. Thanks for checking this one out, guys, and we'll see you back here next time.